So now moving to the Waipapa Papua Nui Innes Community Board. And Chair and Deputy Chair, welcome to the table. Thank you for having us. Um, I've got Simon Britton, right, our Deputy Chair, with me today. Um, we're just going to present sort of a few highlights from our report, which we're assuming you've all read. Um, that picture there that you can see is the new Northlink uh, retail park on Langdon's Road. Um, that is the parts of it opened last year and Kmart, which is the big draw card for that one, that opened just after the Level, four lo level 3 lockdown finished. Um, it is causing issues with traffic in the area. We've got residential um, properties just right across the road from the retail park. Um, and we have asked, well, we've been told a full assessment is being done um, of the network affected by the development. That's part of the resource um, consent process, so we've asked to be kept informed about the, the results of that as a board, because we've had people, residents, coming to us about the issues. And the issues actually spread further down Langdon's Road um, to the Greers Road intersection, and also right along to uh, Northlands Mall, the roundabout there by the library, and along Sisson Drive. Um, if we move on to the next one. So just further down Langdon's Road, in fact, is the Papua Nui Bush, which has been established over the course of the last few years uh, with the support of uh, council, council staff and a number of community groups. So we had a uh, community weeding and planting day there on Arbor Day on the 5th of June. Uh, we had uh, the governance team, uh, board members, park staff, uh, and a number of individuals and groups from the community there that day. And I also just want to acknowledge the work and support, especially of the Rotary Club of Papua Nui and Papua Nui High School who have been involved throughout that time. Uh, and the plants that were first planted there a few years ago now are really getting well established, so I'd invite uh, councillors and public to visit and take a look. Um, and on to some more planting. This is Rutland Reserve, which uh, actually is neighbours Paparoa Street School. And the school has um, taken on some projects in this reserve. Uh, there were springs that popped up in there after the earthquakes. And so there's wetland planting um, being done around there. And the school, the classes in the school have been sort of doing projects on um, improvements that they would like to see to the reserve. Um, we, as a board, went and visited a couple of times last year and we heard about... Um, you know, they've been researching a playground upgrade, the possibility of getting some beehives in there, community gardens, um, na changing the name of the reserve and getting some signage and all that sort of thing. So it was really cool to see that. And they're taking their role as kaitiaki of the reserve really seriously. So that was great to see. And also the partnership they've built with the park rangers and the council is great. Oh, this is Melvin Park on Innes Road, right, right beside Rugby Park there. Um, uh, it's been a project that's been a long time coming um, to get some fitness stations installed around the park. Um, the council's been working with the St Albans Residents um, Association and the first of those stations has gone in right beside the playground. Uh, that's got four pieces of equipment, two of which are accessible um, items. And then, so that's the first station and the second and third stations will be uh, funded by the fundraised um, and done by the Residents Association. So that's great to get that project underway. The rebuild of the St Albans Community Centre is well underway now. Uh, at a recent board meeting, we had two staff from uh, Health Based Solutions, which is the business uh, formerly branded as Hardy and Thompson. So actually two of the Thompson family came along and presented us with a time capsule container uh, that will be uh, deposited in that building uh, at the appropriate time through that building process. Uh, Hardy and Thompson are a long established uh, business in the area. They provided in fact the previous time capsule which was recovered uh, when the building was demolished post earthquake and council staff now have a process underway with community and local stakeholders to identify and select some suitable items to include in that uh, container. Uh, it's been a piece of work underway to extend Belfast Cemetery. There's been additional plots established there and a children's area. During some of the construction work with an access road with that, there was a midden discovered which triggered a full archaeological investigation uh, of that area just to ensure that there wouldn't need downstream uh, or in the future there wouldn't need to be any uh, archaeological further work done uh, with any uh, internments or things that were happening there. So that process is all complete now and that, that work's been done. 
And then finally, we've got the modular pump track at um, 10 Shirley Road. Uh, this has been a project which our staff have worked really hard on for the last couple of years. Um, we originally got a petition from this boy here, you can see on the bike, um, asking for some sort of pump track in the Shirley. And so we now have this modular pump track. We weren't able to have the opening that we had planned um, due to COVID, but it was great to, um, once it was installed, we had got him down there and he was the first person to ride it. So that was very cool and he's, he was really chuffed. And it is really popular. Uh, it's right across the road from Shirley Primary School. So it's very, very busy after school and in the weekends. And that's it from us. Great. All right. Thank you. Well, great to see that pump track in place. I remember the decision making on that some time ago. So um, good to, to see that happening. Um, moving to questions, Pauline. Well, not so much a question, but I just want to actually uh, reinforce what's happening here. I mean, we've seen the other boards presenting today too. What we're seeing is actually exactly what we want to see, and that's all these community-led projects coming up from the community, like the Papanui Bush project is community-led, Paparoa Street School, it was their initiative, the Melvin Park fitness um, project came from the Residents Association, and Shannon came to us with his idea, and he'd done the work around the petition and really pushed that one forward, bringing us ideas and also the willingness of the council to partner and use this energy and capture the energy and actually get really good outcomes for our community. And I'm really proud of the way our community board is supporting our community. We, our doors open, they come in and we pick these things up. And the way the council's partnering as well, this is exactly what we want to see. And we're seeing really good examples of really successful projects all morning today. So it's fantastic. Great. Thank you. James. Kia ora. Uh, Councillor Cotta, of course, would say that about um, your community board. But um, <laughs> I have a, a genuine question, and she may have partially answered it. How was that funded, that pump track? That was through the Capital Endowment Fund. Right. Do you, do you have any idea what that cost? As you can. Do you not get anything more? No, you get enough. <laughs> we can easily, if you don't know, we can easily find out. I can't remember off the top of my okay, head. Okay, that, that, that's, that, you know, I'd take my hat off to you. What was that? About 300,000. <coughs> Serious? Not. Don't you have it's temporary. It's a temporary trip. All right. Let's. We can get some information back to you if we need to. Let's verify that and get some information um, sent around. That's fine. Um, Yanni, you've got a question. I was really concerned to see the traffic issues at Langdon's Road, and I just wanted to understand why weren't they addressed as part of the consenting process? Um, that's an ongoing issue. Our staff are liaising with the consenting team about that exact thing. Um, about the we, least and minor effects. Yeah, yeah. The, there are, as the, the first two stages of the development are open now. There is a third stage. Um, and as part of that third stage, um, there are meant to be lights put in at the Greer's Langdon intersection. Um, so that, that will be happening in the future. But it's... I think the problems have spread further down the other end of Langdon's Road than maybe was anticipated. Yeah, I mean, I'm just aware of like having been through this with Ferry Maid when Ferry Maid was put in, and I think there was a High Court case that was quite critical of Council failing to look at the cumulative traffic impacts of these sorts of developments. So I wonder whether it would be helpful to get a report back to the appropriate Council Committee just to look at how consenting and traffic assessment is working because it does seem to me a huge problem where you've got such a huge development creating all sorts of issues with traffic not being addressed as part of the consenting process. So that's something that we'd be able to pick up through Mike's committee um, and it would be appropriate to do so. Um, let's, rather than asking for a report today, let's... Um... Well, also, just one other thing. We, we do have an audit underway of resource consents so I wonder whether this could be one of those that gets put into that audit process. Um, and it would be good to get here from staff, not today obviously, but to yeah. maybe get a memo about what's happening with that audit of the consents that we've already requested. All right, let's, let's pick that up. Let's pick both of those points up because they're, they're both good ones. Thank you very much. Um, and finally, Aaron. Yeah, Emma, I'm, I, I think the process was in place here. It's just the modelling didn't match the success of the stores. So, but the traffic lights at the end, aren't they funded by the developer once they're triggered? And that comes down to numbers. Is that correct or not? 
Uh, from my reading of the resource consent report, uh, the report is silent on who is to fund them. It just says there's a requirement for them to be in place. Because normally a development like this, the developer, if they trigger the upgrade, um, trigger the numbers, then they pay. Was that not written into the okay. consent? St staff are working through those issues. All right, let's get some information back yeah. on that. Rather than speculating, let's find out the facts on that and get them circulated. Yep, that'll be good. Thank you. All right, so um, Pauline, you're happy to move this. Um, and somebody to second. James, um, all those in favour say aye. aye. Against, that's carried. Um, so 